Cervantes! Ah! <laughs> You're so silly! Hi guys! Today we are going to a David Archuleta concert. We literally decided this about a few hours ago. And um, this is a weird part of Kansas City that we've never been to. Maybe not weird, just a part we weird to us because we've never seen it before. Apparently, Carmen Nelson and David Archuleta are here today. There's a grandma. Welcome to the Knucklehead Garage, right there, Cindy. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? Oh, hi, Mark. Are you gonna sing along to every song? Oh, every song. I don't know the words, any of the songs, but I'm gonna make them my own. I'm gonna be original. So we're really close guys. Look, they'll be right there. I was trying to focus on what everyone was telling me to focus on. Um, the more you get at this, the more fame you have, the happier you'll be. And I was finding that wasn't true for my, from my own experience. When I went, took a break, and forgot about myself and started focusing on other people, I found myself. I found that piece I was missing. And so coming back, I was like, I don't know if I should do this. And um, so when I went into this writing session, um, they said that writers asked, so what's been on your mind? And I was like, uh, I don't know if I should talk about it, but I did. I said, you know what, I came back from being a missionary, it changed my life. And I'm wondering if I should do this, <laughs> do music and all this, and I don't know if I want to. And because I don't want to go back to where I was, I, how can I go back just because I want to prove to people that I'm still around and prove them by going back to where I wasn't happy? And they said, well, why don't we write about that? I said, really? <laughs> and they... I was like, I, I didn't think about that, I guess. I just <laughs> didn't think about that. That I could write about things that actually mean something to me instead of just trying to write a catchy hit song. And so I did. And so it starts out line. It says, I think I'll take a second chance. But I won't be passing by those things that mean most to me. And, uh, <laughs> so anyway, that, I, I start talking so much now. I, we probably, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so going back to music, Postcards in the Skies, the new album, and so I'm going to go and sing another song off of this album. And before I sing this song, I like to ask a question, has anybody ever felt like they were their own worst enemy before? Anyone ever felt like that? Okay, you're feeling me here, Kansas City. Because so many times I felt like the only person holding me back was me, myself. And because I think, oh, I have to do things just right. I have to show people I can do everything just right, no problems, or else it's a failure. Or why even bother trying? And um, it's all gonna just fall and crash and boom and burn. But I'm learning that you don't have to be perfect to move forward and to be happy. You don't have to be invincible to keep trying. And if you fall, you can get back up. It doesn't mean it's all over. So that's what this song is about. And it's something that I've been trying to teach myself because sometimes I'm like, I've gotta, I get that armor on, I start like having that battle. I'm like, no, I, I can do everything just right. But no, I have weaknesses. I'm not a perfect person and that's okay. I can keep trying and giving my best. And it's not always gonna be perfect, but that doesn't mean that it can keep me from being happy. So I hope if any of you felt that way, um, this song's for you. It's called Invincible. We love it. For the most part, most of these songs, I mean, every single one I've performed so far was written in Nashville. And uh, one of my buddies who's, who's from here, actually, originally Kansas City, he, he now lives in Nashville, too. Um, you, you, some of you might be familiar with him, David Cook. <laughs> I was there now, and it's it's fun. There are a lot of us uh, people who are on a, on American Idol that live in Nashville. Sorry. There's going to do a little <laughs> Kelly Clarkson, Carrie Underwood, Chris Allen. There are a lot of Arnelena. There's just a bunch of us, and 
uh, David Cook, he will, sometimes we'll get lunch together. Lord. He'll just send me a message just checking up on me. I, I, he's kind of like, always, I think he's always felt like he's my bigger brother. Just uh, looking after me and making sure I'm okay. Especially because we both were on the same season of American Idol and we're the only two to have that experience. We're the only ones who knew what that was like, at least for our season, you know. And um, even though we're very different from different worlds and uh, different personalities, that really made us connect, really made us bond. And uh, so it's just kind of fun. Like he'll just say like, hey, I, I got your new music and stuff. It sounds good and things like that. So he's a good man. <laughs> but uh, so, okay. Wish you oh, well. <laughs> Second isn't a bad place to be uh, after thinking I was, you know what, when I auditioned for that show, I had no idea that I was going to even get past any round. I, I just felt something and I was, you know, I've, talk about following your heart, you just sometimes feel like you need to do something. I felt like I needed to audition. I, uh, I prayed about it as a 16 year old by my bedside. Said, you know what, I don't, I'm not sure why, but I just feel like I need to do this. Is this something that's gonna take me somewhere good on my journey of life? And the answer was yes. And so I went for it. I had no idea though that I was gonna get a golden ticket, you know? <laughs> and it just kept going and going and going. I'm like, what the heck? I don't know what's going on. I, I, I thought, I didn't even say bye to any of my friends. I didn't really tell any of them, or my family, really. To be, I mean, my brothers and sisters kind of knew, and my mom, and my dad. But I was like, oh, well, I'll be back. It's not like I'm going to be gone for very long. And I ended up never coming back. And I was like, wow. Sometimes life, you just don't know what's up ahead. And um, speaking of that, actually, the song that I'm going to sing if I ever stop, you know, getting distracted by everything, and I'm going off on tangents here, but um, uh, this song is about that. It's how sometimes you don't know what's up ahead in the future, and it can be scary. The, the, the road up ahead, because it's like, am I ready for the future? Am I prepared enough? What if I'm not? What if life gives me something, and I don't know how to handle it, and I don't make it through? I don't know how I'm going to come out alive with this situation. It looks really scary and hard. And, um, you know, American Idol was kind of <laughs> that for me. There are some weeks where I just thought, I don't know, I'm gonna, maybe I should just go run away right now and hide under a rock because it's so much. And, um, and maybe my mission was like that too. It's like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but a lot of people, when I went on my mission, after American Idol and releasing, okay, stop with the stories here. Sometimes I've been, I don't know why, I just feel like sometimes I'm just talking to people in the living room or stuff, but it's like, oh, that's right, we're in a concert. So, uh, but um, I, can't, I guess, um, <laughs> where am I going here? My, I will just say quickly, my going on the mission, a lot of people told me, you're such an idiot. Why are you doing that? Do you realize you're in a, you're in a business where you have to keep the momentum going? If you stop, people are gonna forget about you. They're gonna move on, and everything that you worked so hard for is gonna to go to waste. Do you really think that's what God wants you to do? If you're doing, if you're going to serve God, who gave you music in the first place? Wasn't that God? So why would you think he would ask you to go away from all of that? <laughs> and that was a hard thing to figure out. I'm like, you know, I'm not sure. What God asks us to do doesn't always make sense. Yeah, when I, he led me to go on audition for a reality TV show, that didn't make sense to me either. <laughs> and now he's asking me to do something else. I don't understand it, it doesn't make sense. But I'm learning how to trust. I'm learning how to trust in him and in his plan for me. And that he trusts me, that I will follow, even when it doesn't make sense and it's not easy for me. And so here I am coming back from that and I'm just amazed to see people still coming to the shows after being gone for a few years. And letting me share these songs and these stories with all of you. And so that, about trust, that's what I wrote this song about. About trust in, in the man upstairs and in his plan. And learning how to trust that I can take 
on whatever's up ahead, even though we don't always know what's down the road. So now I'm finally gonna get to the song here. And it's called I'm Ready. I'm ready. Did you like the show? Um, I did. <laughs> but what we were focused on was your hair. How you kept it perfect the whole time. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was told Victor, I'm like, that's not normal. No. Do you style it? Um, I a mean, real question. I put, I mean, I just wake up. I let it kind of naturally dry. I do comb it, you know. And then I just <laughs> put a little bit of hairspray just to kind of keep it back. Uh -huh. And then, you know, behind the ears. Yeah. Nothing too much. I don't want to put too much product in, you know. See, this took a lot of work and looked already where it's at. It looks good. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was fun. The end, we were kind of awkward, but it was fun overall. It was a lot of old memories. That was kind of cool. This was a cool little venue that I didn't even know existed here in Kansas City. I also don't know of a lot of places here in Kansas City yet. So anyways, I guess we're figuring it out. Thanks for putting on a good show, David Archuleta. And you are a good performer. And I know you were going off in a lot of tangents. You kept talking about that, but it was kind of funny and it made it personal. Now we feel like, you know, we're a part of something that you'll remember. Oh, remember that one time I wouldn't stop talking? Yeah, well, we remember that now and we'll know that we were part of it. So it makes it special for us too. So that was fun. All right, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and send it to a friend. Bye. Say